Hi. In this video series, I'm going to introduce the Network Contagion Simulator, a simulator I'm working on that is intended to simulate the transmission of infectious disease in a network of persons. The, net, the, the simulator can be parametrized using the parameters section in the left side of the window. I will show you some of the parameters. The first two parameters are the network simulation name, the simulation name of the, the simulator is going to use. Let's say we name this one small town and that we're going to simulate 200 uh, nodes. The nodes in the simulator are going to represent the, the persons that conform the social group. So a social group is going to be formed in this case by 200 persons and uh, the simulator is going to create a, uh, the, um, the, the, the structure of the society based on these parameters. Let's see how the simulator creates this, this uh, social group. As you see, there's a center in the social group right here. And from here, we move uh, outwards, creating nodes and connections. Each node represents one person. And as you see, some persons are going to be connected to more persons, more uh, nodes than others. Some of the persons are going to be connected just to one, to one node and others are going to be connected to uh, three, four, five, uh, as in this case, we see this node is connected to four, um, to four other nodes and to a, a fifth node, which connects this node to, to the rest of the network. What, we're going, what we are seeing here is, is the structure known as a tree, a tree in which every node is connected at least to one other node and uh, there are no loops, there are no cycles. I mean, if we uh, start in a certain node and try to go from this node to another one, then the only way to go back to the first node is by the same path. There are no other paths to go from, no from one node to another. There are no alternative paths uh, unless we start repeating, repeating steps. But, but uh, I mean, if, if we use unique steps to go from one node to another, then we are going to have only one path. This is known as a tree structure. And this structure is quite convenient to model the social groups for network, for, for infectious disease transmissions. Okay, next we have to say, what is the minimum and maximum amount of nodes a node is going to be connected to. As we said before, every node is going to be connected at least to one other node. This, this one node is the one that connects the, the node to the rest of the network. But the person uh, can be more reluctant or more willing to connect to other nodes. If uh, the node is, is reluctant, then it's going to have a negative a negative amount of uh, offspring. I mean, uh, nodes that can be considered the, the offspring of that node. And, and in this case, we are, we're saying that uh, a node is, is reluctant to connect. So the minimum number of offsprings is, is going to be negative. It's minus five in this case. And it's, uh, it's going to connect uh, at most, uh, if it's a node willing to connect to others, at most it's going to be connected to seven other nodes. What the simulator does is that while it is building the network structure, it is uh, deciding randomly, uh, this node is going to be more on the reluctant side or this, this node is going to be more in the willing side. Uh, so it's going to have more or less uh, offspring according, accordingly, accordingly uh, with that. Of course, there is no way to have a negative offspring uh, when, when a person or when a node is reluctant to connect to others, then um, that node is mm, most likely not going to have any offspring. For example, this one here may have, may, may have a negative uh, number of minimum offspring and um, is more reluctant to connect. So it doesn't have any, any offspring as we see here. 
So with these first three parameters, the simulator uh, creates the network, as we see here, and uh, start disseminating the infection across the network. You see uh, the, the infection starting at some points here and then spreading to the rest of the network. How this spread occurs uh, is set by different parameters that we're going to, say, to, to see in future videos. I'm going to change some of the parameters here. Let's say that uh, instead of uh, having minus five as minimum offspring and seven as maximum offspring, we set uh, minus one and 20 as the maximum offspring. Okay, in that case, the simulator is going to create a network which is going to be more concentrated around the center of the network. That's because people is more willing to connect and uh, the nodes doesn't, don't have to, to spread outwards the center of the network. Let's see. As you see here, the network is much more compact. That's because uh, nodes are more willing to connect to others. And some nodes will have an, an, an important amount of uh, offspring and uh, maybe there are going to be so some, some much offspring that the network cannot be, uh, cannot expand outwards um, and it's more concentrated towards the center. In that case, an infection is going to spread more easily because, uh, I mean, a contagious disease is going to, to spread more easily because uh, every node is connected to more, or, uh, to, to more nodes to, to, and, and every node is capable of uh, spreading the infection to more, uh, to more person at a time. And maybe the um, epidemics is going to happen very fast as we see here in a very short time, the, the infection disease is spread across the network. Instead, if we say, no, we're going to have, instead of 20 as a maximum offspring, we, we're going to have, for example, three, then we're going to restrict, to limit the number of nodes every node is connected to. And what we see here is that the network expands the network spreads and, and covers a lot of uh, space. And um, we may not have noticed, but uh, in this case, the infection took uh, a lot more time to spread across the network. Let, let's see it again. And, and let's pay attention to this, to this part of the, of the screen where, the, where we track the spread of the infection across time. And we see that when the network is, uh, is more spread, it's, more, it's not as compact as before, then we're going to see that the infection takes more time to, to travel across the network. We're going to, to go deeper into that in future videos. Thank you so much. The simulator is available at litomd.com slash simred. Thank you so much.